Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sojus on I6.1 FM Owere. Uh, we have uh, again in the studio uh, a special guest in the person of His Grace Most Reverend Anthony J. V. Obinna, the Catholic Archbishop of Owere. Uh, he's here on a very special purpose. Uh, the bill, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, we became an act in 2015 now being proposed as a bill in Imo state is has been generating a lot of controversy they there have been a lot of argument and counter argument and discussion around this very theme around this very uh, uh, bill the church is has come up with its on understanding of the bill and its own position about the bill. Uh, His Grace is here in the studio to make very clear to the Imo people, to Imo lights, what the position of the Kali Church is on this bill. Your Grace, you're welcome to Ozisa Radio. Thank you, Father Ray, and all of you who work at the Ozisa Radio outfits. Yeah, some years ago, a bill came up in the House of Assembly under the name uh, Reproductive Rights. I don't have the full title of that bill at that time. Uh, but somehow it's almost in the same line of the bill that we fought against and uh, rejected. Uh, some of it is showing up in the new bill. Though we have respectfully studied the bill as being proposed and being presented, and a response was submitted uh, to the office uh, that is in charge of looking at this matter. So I want to use this opportunity to actually uh, put forward uh, the Catholic position on this bill, especially as I will not be available personally to present this uh, response on Monday, even though I might send somebody to represent me or one or two persons. In any case, this is my position reflecting the Catholic Church position in our way I diocese. Despite the good intentions of the initiators and sponsors of the bill meant for the protection and promotion of the human person's life, dignity, and right, I propose that the bill in its present formulation be withdrawn on the following grounds of misconception, ambiguity, unclarity, conflict, and insufficiency. To this extent, the bill willy-nilly promotes anti-life cause the problem was not well arranged and so much was jam-packed that adds to the reader's difficulty in understanding and appreciating better the proposed bill. For instance, since the human person is the principal subject matter of the bill, it would have been more appropriate to first dwell on a clear definition of the human person before any other matter. B, even though the current presentation of the bill puts part nine, the interpretation of vital concepts at the end of the document, it would have been preferable to have that section at the beginning in order to make for a better reading and clearer understanding of the bill. Regarding the ambiguity of the content and uh, intent of the bill, Reading part 9 of the bill, called Interpretation, 
as indeed other parts of the bill, it is clear to me that certain basic and vital terms are not clearly and sufficiently articulated and defined in accordance with divine, natural, and constitutional laws. This debilitates or weakens and vitiates the substance and purpose of the bill. For instance, insufficiency of the bill defining the person as male and female. The bill should have more correctly and comprehensively defined the human person as a human being, a human life from conception to natural death, whose inalienable and inviolable, inviolable dignity derives from God our Creator. And there is on clarity with regard to the term gender in the bill. The bill made a, uni a unilateral use of the term gender only for the female sex instead of making it applicable for both female and male sexes. A unilateral understanding or usage of the term gender can, in modern terms, create bias, conflict of interest, and misapplication. Then there is an improper definition of the terms spouse. A correct understanding of spouse is within the proper definition of marriage a union between a male sex and a female sex that qualifies either or both to be called spouse. But under current gender ideology, spouse can mean anybody. Between a man and a woman, a, between a man and a man, a woman and a woman, then there is a lack of adequate criteria in the bill for qualifying a service provider. To qualify as a service provider, the bill should have a clause requiring the service provider to be pro-life and respecting the sacredness of the human life, which our faith and cultural tradition uphold. And there is also vagueness in the use of domestic relationship in the document. The way the bill defines it exposes it to connotations injurious to the true meaning of marriage according to our faith and culture. Then there is a problematic provision of the bill on abuse, intimidation, and harassment. The current formulation of the bill on the matters of intimidation and harassment is ambiguous. It can be exploited against the accused and so can cause more harm than the good envisaged. It needs to be seriously reformulated. Confusion in the use of the expressions female circumcision or genital mutilation. The two expressions female circumcision and genital mutilation are not the same and need to be clearly distinguished. Insufficiency, distortion and alien is issues on the bill's list of harmful traditional practices. The bill does not exhaust harmful traditional practices on matters of sex. I should include other important cases like Diala, Osu, Ume, and Ohu, Ikushinwai, or dragging a woman to a shrine for the administration of idolatrous oaths. Nonetheless, I even think that there should be a definite and separate bill with regard to the abolition of the discrimination that we have among ourselves, the discrimination based on Diala, Osu, Ume, and Ohu. The bill distorts certain traditional practices, for instance, the misconception and confusion between female circumcision and genital mutilation, femicide, acid testing, criminalization of pregnancy outside marriage. The bill introduces practices alien to our culture, such as mentioned above. Grave negative implications and consequences on fundamental matters of the bill. In spite of the goodwill, of the bill for the good of our people because uh, we believe that uh, the, the sponsors of the bill have a certain goodwill toward more people in spite of this goodwill it has this bill has the following negative imp negative implications and consequences some parts of the proposed bill undermine the teaching of the church on the human person sanctity of life marriage between male sex and female sex as well as the family some part of the bill subtly lends credence to feminist cultural law and cultural values. It refers to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. Those who practice same-sex union, man marrying to married to man, woman married to woman, and other things. 
which the Western world that has become very atheistic and anti-God, they want to impose on the rest of the of humanity. Africa remains a cradle of civilization. Uh, the white man will not teach us about marriage. The bill also subtly encourages the use of contraceptives, abortion, in vitro fertilization, and uh, many anti-life practices. The bill subtly grants women undue absolute autonomy and liberty regarding their sexuality and body. Nobody has absolute autonomy or liberty with regard to his or her body, especially within the context of marriage and beyond. The bill subtly forces the church and pro-life organizations to compromise the policies guiding their health services. The bill clearly permits capital punishment, death penalty, which the church rejects and offers better options. The bill places overwhelming emphasis on litigation as the only means of settling sexual matters. But there is need to make provision for the possibility of alternative dispute resolution or settlement out of court in all cases. On grounds of ethnocultural and linguistic sensitivity, it is prefer preferable to use the expression sexual defamation instead of sexual blackmail. From what we know from other sources and documents, the proposed bill seems to be induced and driven by external influences inimical to our faith and culture. Uh, the Western world, Europe and America have orientations that are now often contrary to uh, the Christian faith and to original and standard African values and culture. So that's why we are cautious. While there are maybe good things in the bill, we prefer that the bill in its present formulation be withdrawn so that we can uh, remove the ambiguities, the misconceptions, conflict, and maybe we can come back uh, for, to serve Imo people better than as presently proposed. So this is what I would have been presenting, but I will not be available at the House of Assembly to do so. Thank you. I wish you well. Uh, thank you very much, Your Grace. Very quickly, I know uh, there's no time to start talking about this. This is a clear position of the church on this bill. But just one question, and uh, I, uh, people have continued to ask this kind of this question, and I did when some of them came here. Is there anything contained in this bill that is not contained in the Nigerian Constitution and the human rights? And when you look at it, I told them there is practically nothing, and there is there are some tiny prints, some small prints in this that is generating this kind of uh, uh, opposition, so to speak. And I know uh, this position will be made clear. Uh, of, of course, you say you've written them, you've made this submission, and I know uh, they're going to listen to it. It's very important that Imo people. Uh, uh, no disposition uh, of the Catholic Church. Thank you very much, Your Grace, for coming to Oziza. Thank you, and God bless you all. Happy yes. weekend, happy Sunday. Pray for me, I pray for you. And Thank I you go to church. Thank you. Thank you.